Christ be above me, never to part. Christ on my rival, Christ on my left hand, Christ all around me, shield in the strife. Christ in my sleeping, Christ in my sitting, Christ in my rising, light of my life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. So happy St. Patrick's Day. It's good to see a lot of green in the church today. As we begin this Mass, let us acknowledge our sins, times when we have not loved God, times when we have not witnessed to him as St. Patrick witnessed to him through his whole life. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, glory, glory, in excelsis Deo, glory, glory, in excelsis Deo. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory, glory, in excelsis Deo. Glory, glory, in excelsis Deo. 
For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Let us pray. I offer this Mass for Joe Boyle, whose anniversary occurs at this time. O God, who chose the Bishop St. Patrick to preach your glory to the peoples of Ireland, grant through his merits and intercession that those who glory in the name of Christian may never cease to proclaim your wonderful deeds to all. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. First reading, a reading from the prophet Jeremiah. See, the days are coming. It is the Lord who speaks, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, but not a covenant like the one I made with their ancestors on the day I took them by the hand to bring them out of their land of Egypt. They broke the covenant of mine, so I had to show them who was master. It is the Lord who speaks. No, this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel when those days arrive. It is the Lord who speaks. Deep within, within them I will plant my law, writing it on their hearts. Then I will be their God, and they shall be my people. There will be no further need for neighbour to try to teach neighbour, or for brother to say to brother, learn to know the Lord. No, they will all know me, the least no less than the greatest. It is the Lord who speaks, since I will forgive their iniquity and never call their sin to mind. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Response, a pure heart create for me, O God. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion, blot out my offense. O wash me more and more from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. A pure heart create for me, O God. A pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. Pure heart, create for me, O God. Give me again the joy of your help. With a spirit of fervor, sustain me, that I may teach transgressors your ways, and sinners may return to you. A pure heart, create for me, O God. Second reading, a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. During his life on earth, Christ offered up prayers and entreaty, aloud and in silent tears, to the one who had the power to save him out of death. And he submitted so humbly that his prayer was heard. Although he was son, he learnt to obey through suffering. But having been made perfect, he became for all who obey him the source of eternal salvation. The word of the Lord. Please stand to read the gospel. Glory to you, O Christ, you are the word of God. If a man serves me, says the Lord, he must follow me. Wherever I am, my servants will be there too. Glory to you, O Christ, you are the word of God. The Lord be with you. A 
Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. These approached Philip, who came from Bethsaida in Galilee, and put this question to him, Sir, we should like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew, and Andrew and Philip together went to tell Jesus. Jesus replied to them, Now the hour has come, for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you most solemnly, unless a wheat grain falls on the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain. But if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. Anyone who loves his life loses it. Anyone who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If a man serves me, he must follow me. Wherever I am, my servant will be there too. If anyone serves me, my father will honor him. Now my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this very reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. A voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. People standing by who heard this said it was a clap of thunder. Others said it was an angel speaking to him. Jesus answered, It was not for my sake that this voice came, but for yours. Now sentence is being passed on this world. Now the prince of this world is to be overthrown, and when I am lifted up from the earth, I shall draw all men to myself. By these words he indicated the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. this feast day of our patron saint, I want to read you a a couple of passages from St. Patrick's Confessions. Patrick begins his, his confessions by writing, My name is Patrick. I am a sinner, a simple country person, and the least of all believers. I am looked down upon by many. And he ends the confessions, May none of them ever say that whatever little I did or made known to please God was done through ignorance. Instead, you can judge and believe in all truth that it was a gift of God. This is my confession before I die. This great, glorious St. Patrick, it's fascinating, sees himself, you know, as, as the least of all believers, as a sinner, a simple country person. Something about his humility that uh, gives us an insight. And we see this in, in all the saints. You know, they, they, uh, they seem to give themselves less credit than, than they perhaps deserve. And yet at the same time, that humility, that sense of littleness is precisely what allows them to see the work of God in their lives, the power of God. Because if they're weak, if they're little, it means that the great works that are done through them uh, are God's works, are not just their, their own works. They are the works of God. So here's a, perhaps a lesson of humility for us. To recognize my own limitations, my own weaknesses, so that the power, the glory of God may, may shine through. Patrick writes, I was taken prisoner. I was about 16 at the time. At that time, I did not know the true God. I was taken into captivity in Ireland along with thousands of others. We deserved this because we had gone away from God and did not keep his commandments. 
It was there that the Lord opened up my awareness of my lack of faith. Even though it came about late, I recognized my feelings, so I turned with all my heart to the Lord my God, and he looked down on my lowliness and had mercy on my youthful ignorance. Again, the second lesson we learn from St. Patrick is is a lesson of of conversion. We see he he refers to this uh, in this passage to to a particular conversion that he had, a singular conversion. And yet, conversion is not just a once-off event, but something that is that is continuous. You know, in that, in those words, "I am a sinner," he acknowledges that uh, that this is something that, uh, that 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 we have to keep turning to God, keep converting. Conversion obviously means change, it means to change our ways, and and change can be difficult. It can be painful because it needs, uh, it requires an acknowledgement that, you know, something isn't perfect in me, in my life, in my character. And then the gospel tells us, you know, unless the grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, uh, it can never bear fruit. It remains a single grain. And that that passage obviously refers to to the cross of, of Christ, you know, the fact that he must die so that May we may have life through him. And yet Christ is, is the interpretive key to our experience, to our every experience, including the experience of, of sin, of imperfection. The grain of wheat, perhaps, is, uh, is those defects of character, uh, those little things that perhaps we're, as of yet, blind to, that we need to let go, that we need to allow to fall to the ground and die so that we may bear fruit, that we may flourish. St. Patrick writes furthermore, that is why I cannot be silent, nor would it good to do so about such great blessings and such a gift that the Lord so kindly bestowed in the land of my captivity. This is how we can repay such blessings. When our lives change and we come to know God, to praise and bear witness to this great, to his great wonders before every nation under heaven. As we change our lives continuously, as we convert to God, we are able to, to bear that witness. We see, we have a, a desire in our hearts, an ever-growing desire to share the joy the happiness that is in our hearts on account of our relationship with God. And so with our praise, with our thanks, we truly give witness to him. With our whole lives, we begin to give witness to him. And that is our task. It is not something that belongs to, you know, uh, particular individuals out there, missionaries who are proclaiming the word of God in distant lands. This is the task of every Christian each of us in accordance with their their condition in life uh, is to bear witness with his or her whole life, her whole existence to to God. Sometimes that's in words, uh, but I think more often than others that it's in in deeds. Um, St. Francis famously said, you you may know this this famous quote, preach the good news, proclaim the gospel, and if necessary, use words. So finally, may today's feast may be, uh, may, today, may today's feast be, uh, yes, a source of joy uh, in our hearts on account of this, this great patron saint that we have, his, his powerful intercession for us and for our land. May it be a source of pride, but also May it be uh, a little challenge, uh, a source of inspiration to imitate this great man, not just share in his glory, but to, to, to imitate him in, you know, in, in the fullness of his experiences, in his profound humility, in his conversion, continuous conversion, 
And finally, and, and most importantly, in his burning desire to bring the good news, to bring God to other people. That is our call, to bring God into the culture, into the world that we are in. St. Patrick, pray for us. Amen. Let us stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As the solemnity of Easter approaches, let our prayer to the Lord be all the more insistent, trusting as St. Patrick did, in the Lord's great mercy. We pray for our Holy Father Francis, that he may have continued good health to proclaim the merciful love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace with justice in our troubled world, that hatred and violence may turn to reconciliation and love and the suffering of the innocent may be eased. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who will be initiated into the church this Easter, that the seeds of the gospel within them may yield a rich harvest of prayer, faith, and service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all Irish people at home and abroad, that this day of celebration of our national saint may unite hearts and minds and inspire us to remain faithful to the gospel he served. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick or housebound, that they may know the gentle touch of God's healing love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those that have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith that they have received the gift of eternal life promised and received in baptism. Recently deceased, John Toner, Geraldine Carlin, first anniversary, Jack McKittrick, Michelle O'Hare, and all those named in the bulletin. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We bring to God's mercy the soul of John Joe Boyle, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of love, through St. Patrick and the saints, you have planted in our hearts the hope of eternal life, Hear our prayers and bring us and all our loved ones to the joys of the kingdom of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept this pure sacrifice, which through the labors of St. Patrick, your grateful people make to the glory of your name, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and to proclaim your greatness with due praise as we honor St. Patrick. For you drew him through daily prayer in captivity and hardship to know you as a loving father. You chose him out of all the world to return to the land of his captors that they might acknowledge Jesus Christ, the Redeemer. In the power of your spirit, you directed his paths to win the sons and daughters of the Irish to the service of the triune God. And so, with the angels and archangels, and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Donal, our apostolic administrator, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, 
for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things that we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and count it among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith, my Lord, and my God. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace.
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Following our Lord's teaching, let us say with faith and trust, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the feast of the kingdom of heaven, says the Lord.
Let us stand as we pray. Strengthen us, O Lord, by this sacrament, so that we may profess the faith taught by St. Patrick and to proclaim it in our way of living. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, Bishop Allen will take up his ministry and mission, uh, Bishop Allen McGookin, as the Bishop of Down and Connor on Tuesday, the 19th of March. So we uh, continue to pray for him, to keep him in our prayers as, as he prepares for that moment. Uh, our Lenten prayer services continue uh, tomorrow, of course, at 7 p.m. Uh, we will gather here for, for half an hour to adore the Blessed Sacrament um, uh, and to be nourished with our reflection. Uh, we will have a, a penitential, a Lenten penitential uh, service and healing service uh, with the focus being on the sacrament of confession. Uh, so this will be a, a great opportunity to make use of this sacrament in the season of Lent. Uh, this will take place next Sunday, the 24th of March, uh, from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, in St. Joseph's Church. Um, so you're very much encouraged to, to, to make use of that sacrament uh, at this opportunity. So I wish you all uh, a blessed uh, St. Patrick's Day, every blessing for the day and the time ahead. Uh, and also as we, as we uh, approach the season of Easter, those most beautiful, most solemn feasts of our faith, uh, may God give you everything that you need to, uh, to experience those with him. So the Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the Father, who called us together to celebrate this feast of St. Patrick, bless you, protect you, and keep you faithful. Amen. May Christ the Lord, the High King of Heaven, be near you at all times and shield you from evil. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit, who is the source of all holiness, make you rich in the love of God's people. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Hail glorious Saint Patrick, dear Saint of our heart, on us thy poor children bestow a sweet smile, and now thou art